hidden pain is invisible to a common observer. 23-year-old Danica Saywood from Northwest Tasmania is all too familiar with the struggles of chronic illness after her diagnosis with stage 2 endometriosis six years ago. Immediate reaction was just relief to know that what I had been experiencing was endometriosis and that there wasn't something else going on, uh, as well as sadness and uncertainty about what was the future for me, children, work, life, how was I going to live and deal with something that was chronic pain at this age. I didn't do things with friends, I was withdrawn, working was hard, studying was hard, everything just became endometriosis. For me it was seeing a few GPs that gave me the typical you're too young and it's just normal pain until I found a doctor at the family planning who took me seriously, who listened to my symptoms and actually went through the whole process not just disregarding me and what I was feeling. Starting with the most basic of treatments which is the pill and the implanon. Unfortunately neither of them worked for me, they actually made my symptoms worse. The pain is still stabbing and burning, my left ovary is the worst and you just feel absolutely ill to the point where you don't even know what's happening to you anymore, you want to faint, you want to vomit, you want to cry. You just want it to end. But most people have never heard of endometriosis. 176 million women worldwide are living with the disease and are desperate to find a cure so that they can live a normal, happy and productive life. Endometriosis increases the risks of infertility, ovarian and breast cancer. It is one of the most elusive and confusing conditions and its origins are not always easy to pinpoint. Dr. Luke Rombatz is a specialist gynaecologist and obstetrician in Melbourne and has extensive experience in managing severe endometriosis and believes retrograde menstruation is the main cause of the disease. The backflow of menstrual fluid uh, through the fallopian tube. So normally when you get your menstruation, it's the sloughing off of the lining in the uterus, which is called the endometrium. And uh, the blood and the debris should come through the cervix and then flow out through the vagina. But the, because of the contractions and the um, squeezing of the uterus, some of that fluid can be sque squeezed back or pushed back through the fallopian tubes. And when that fluid ends up in the uh, space in the abdominal cavity, uh, some of the cells that may still be alive may attach to the lining inside the tummy. And that's when little tiny islands of endometrium or lining of the uterus can grow inside your tummy. And so when that happens, then you have endometriosis. And each time you get a period, those little tiny islands will also cause a little tiny mini period or mini menstruation inside your tummy. And that causes bleeding, inflammation and pain. recognition that even in young women, even in teenagers, that it's not always normal to have painful periods. And so GPs and specialists need to be aware of that and they need to be uh, on the lookout for signs that you know a young woman's period pain may actually be caused by endometriosis. a significant lack of awareness uh, around this disease and certainly amongst patients there is a lack of awareness. Um, I see quite a large number of young women who have been told by their, you know, their mother perhaps that uh, you know, period pain is just one of those things that you have to learn to live with. Um, certainly amongst GPs it is uh, quite common to see misconceptions about the diseases.
I do relaxation mindfulness techniques I read I do whatever relaxes me to get me out of my own head to get away from the pain so I'm not living with it but it's definitely taken a toll on who I am and how I've turned out because the anxiety and the depression just took hold when the pain was too much Definitely for a very long time, they were unnoticed, they were disrespected and not treated with any type of dignity. Uh, and even now, still go unnoticed and not treated correctly, but we're definitely gaining ground in how people talk about it and it's becoming spoken about and a topic that you can speak to anyone about and we should be able to speak to anyone about because it's just another pain, just like any other person feels. When I was younger, it was a real battle. The pain was so unbearable and I didn't know how to cope with it. I felt depressed because I didn't get to go with my friends and they didn't understand because who does understand at 12, 13, 14? targeting exactly what is causing internal inflammation, why it is happening and what the body is doing to heal itself is what mineral therapist Irene Fisher of Hobart says treating endometriosis should be all about. I mean, I do understand that when a person's in great pain because adhesions and linking with other adhesions and things are sort of tending to put a lot of pressure on the internal organs, I can understand why they do take them away and if you get a good surgeon that can be a very effective solution but as I said before to me that's that shouldn't really be the end of the matter because those adhesions have developed in the first place and they've developed as a result of inflammatory deposits in those areas that have not healed up as they should have so I believe in going back to getting it all to it up. And the same thing, I mean, if you're having the adhesions removed, you really do need the help with your body so that as that gets done, everything will heal up inside. That's what I do. The two things can work together. Mineral therapy actually can work with any form of medicine because it has to do with the basic elements of our own bodies. stories and it's really scary to think maybe I won't have children, maybe I won't do this, maybe I won't do that. Before I was diagnosed I was put on the pill uh, which didn't work for me. It made my symptoms worse, my bleeding worse and my mental state just really suffered from that and so I was taken off that and put on the Implanon um, which was just as bad, just as bad pain. It was constant pain the whole time I had it. Um, affected my migraines, making them worse. And in the end I was taken off it and then I had my lab. After that, I have just stayed off all medical treatment and I purely just do it from my mind, my exercise, my food and hot water bottles or any heat that I can get when I'm in pain. Eating healthy uh, to give your body what it needs to fight and also natural anti-inflammatories to bring down the inflammation that's going on in my body. Um, exercising when you can not heavy exercising not jumping or anything that makes you feel like your ovaries are going to fall out Vizan is 
uh, another one of those hormonal treatments that has indeed recently been approved for use for this condition in Australia. Um, it has had a number of uh, uh, drug trials showing that it is an extremely uh, effective way uh, of dealing with the disease. So a lot of researchers in my field are now focusing on uh, the immune system and, and the role that it plays and we already know quite a bit about it but then the next step is to translate those ideas into new medical treatments and that's where it usually gets unstuck a little bit so uh, we have tried already lots of different medications some of which uh, try to change the way the immune system affects uh, the disease and unfortunately very few of these new drugs have been uh, real successes. Certainly overseas in the UK and in, in Canada and in America they've uh, been probably better advocates uh, for the disease than we have been here in Australia, although uh, we have had a number of quite successful campaigns recently in the last few years. 43-year-old endometriosis sufferer Vicky Webster from Hobart was diagnosed with the disease at 17. She took the pill for three years and was on several medications including tramadol and depoprovera. The attempted treatments were unsuccessful and she had a hysterectomy at 33 which dramatically reduced her symptoms. Vicky has had 23 laparoscopies and one laparotomy to date and is now on hormone replacement patches. Sadly, Vicky recently found out the endometriosis has returned, finding a large endometrioidal lesion in her bowel. I would bleed for, you know, two or three weeks, then stop for two days, and then I'd start again and bleed for four weeks and stop for a day. And so it was just constant pain and, and suffering pretty much a lot from it. pretty much ruined my life. I, I had a really good job um, working in a pet shop with animals that I love to do and stuff. Um, but with the bleeding all the time and the pains and stuff like that, it would become unbearable and you'd have to take time off work a lot and that. So in the end it just was, I couldn't do it. Many times over the years living with endometriosis, it, it would become unbearable sometimes to the point that you would feel really depressed and would want to, you know, think about commit suicide and stuff like that sometimes as the pain was just unbearable to live with. It's, um, it's a horrible disease and I wouldn't wish upon anyone to go through what I had to go through for all them years. This comes from medicine itself. This comes from medical doctors. The mineral tablets that I've used today, I still use Blackmores, but I also use one that's put together in Melbourne where the minerals come from a German doctor who supplies the European doctor. There are homeopathic minerals in it that come from Belgium, and it's in a base of inulin, which acts as a prebiotic, so it's not in the usual sugar of milk lactose base as it happened. I will give her the mineral compounds that are needed to help clean out where you've got inflammation and congestion that's been building up on the outside organs, uh, where maybe it's even starting to join with another set of inflammations on another one of the organs to form adhesions. Cut out all of the take away the rubbish, all of that. Try and eat more fresh food, uh, salad vegetables, all that sort of thing. Over a, a period, say of about three months or so, two, three months, the periods start to improve, the pain starts to diminish. People, if they're adding to the load in their bodies and they're adding to the inflammation and congestion that can build up to things, if they're that way inclined, um, by eating foods that are purely rubbish and that are not giving them any nourishment. The difficulty, we have a big difficulty here in Australia because we have ancient soil in most parts of Australia, which tends to be very lacking in bodies elements that are essential for our health and for our general well-being.
You know, for instance, I had a, a girl here a little while ago who was absolutely devastated because she'd been unable to conceive without help from IVF. Then she conceived with twins, everything seemed to be fine, and she had a miscarriage. And everything just came away. And then I looked at her in other ways, and I never thought about the time she was with me. I rang her up later and I said to her, look, one of the tablets I've given you will help to strengthen all the tissue in your body so that you will carry much easier. But to get those elements like the calcium fluoride, well, green tea has calcium fluoride, uh, goat's milk has calcium fluoride, as long as it comes from goats that have been on soils that have got some calcium. Don't give up. You've got to keep fighting and it needs to be out there, it needs to be understood. Um, partners of women that have endometriosis, they should be educated on as well so they can get an understanding of what their partner is going through. Um, and you know, it needs to be just spoken a lot more and don't ever let anyone tell you that it's in your head or that it's just simple period pains and you'll get over it because it's not in your head. It is a serious condition and it needs to be spoken a lot more widely. Women don't fit a mould for endometriosis treatment as conquering the disease is specific to the sufferer's symptoms and biology. Women must target the underlying causes of internal inflammation. Danica and Vicky are yet to find an effective method that will put the invisible condition to rest. Until then, the sufferers hold hope for a brighter and more fulfilling future. Endometriosis must not go unnoticed.